Live from London, this is BBC News. Czech police link a gunman who killed 14 people to two other attacks. They say he shot himself as they were closing in on him. We do have information suggesting that the perpetrator could be the same person in all those three cases. The US says it's now ready to support a crucial UN resolution on Gaza, hours after the vote is delayed for a fourth time. The British teenager, missing for six years before he was found in France, has spoken publicly for the first time since returning to the UK. And do you have the lucky ticket? Spain grinds to a halt for its Christmas mega lottery, El Gordo, with almost 2.6 billion euros up for grabs. Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Welcome to BBC News Now. Three hours of fast-moving news, interviews and reaction. Police in Prague have revealed new details about Thursday's mass shooting at Charles University. 14 people were killed and the suspected gunman also died at the scene. Police have linked the massacre to a deadly attack in a Czech forest last week. They confirmed that Lenka Halkova, the head of the university's Institute of Musicology, was one of those shot dead yesterday. Outside the university, people have, as you can see, been leaving so many flowers and candles, and Saturday has been declared a national day of mourning across the Czech Republic. Let's take a look uh, now uh, at some of the other stories making. For the latest news on Israel and Gaza, turn to the BBC Global News podcast. For clarity on the day's headlines, interviews and analysis with experts on the region and answers to the questions you have. Listen to Global News Podcast wherever you get your BBC podcasts. You're live with BBC News. A British teenager who had been missing for six years has admitted lying about his escape to protect his mother and grandfather. Alex Batty was found wandering along a road in France and told a motorist who picked him up that he'd walked through the Pyrenees for four days and nights. Speaking to the Sun newspaper, he said he'd been trying to throw police off the scent. Our reporter Nick Johnson outlined what Alex Batty said to the Sun. It's a big day in Spain. They kick off their festive period with a famous lottery. We follow it every year. This is the scene uh, right now in Madrid. Uh, it is live. We were watching earlier as the children are brought in to sing out hundreds of winning numbers, sharing out more than two and a half billion euros in the El Gordo lottery. Now, the big prize is called El Gordo, which means the fat one, and it pays out 400,000 euros to the winning ticket holders. It's uh, a big moment for Spain. So many people get involved. Lots of families and communities uh, join in. Oh, here they are singing. I love this moment. Have a listen. Thrilling for all of those involved. This is being watched right across Spain at the moment. And I'll be talking to someone who has a ticket coming up. So stay with us for that. You're watching BBC News, the headlines. The US says it's now ready to support a crucial UN resolution on Gaza, hours after the vote is delayed for a fourth time. UK Home Office walks back plans to increase the salary threshold needed to bring family members to the country. And the children in Madrid right now that are singing the numbers for El Gordo. We'll be finding out if we have a lucky winner on the programme. Uh, the whole country actually in Spain grinds to a halt today as everyone watches El Gordo with almost 2.6 billion euros up for grabs.
The UN Security Council expected to vote finally on a resolution to take more aid into Gaza and to create conditions for a ceasefire. The US says it's ready now to support the watered down draft. With me is Zina Ago, a policy analyst at Al Shabaka, which is an independent transnational Palestinian think tank. Good to have you with us, Zina. What Good are your thoughts here. on this latest watered down resolution? Primarily that it's a little too little too late, but a ceasefire is the most urgent and immediate thing that does need to happen, so I hope that it does pass. But I think that the call to take out the urgent suspension of hostilities by the US primarily um, is both a very shameful act and also deeply worrying for what might yet come. Do you think other countries will actually all vote for it? Because there's been some anger from some Arab states that it's been watered down so much. They have to decide, I guess, whether to swallow this deal for the sake of at least having a deal or to sort of make a statement and say, we now think this is too thin to even bother with it. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. Uh, let's talk about happy news for many people in Spain right now. The festive season very much kicks off there with the world's richest lottery. It's known as El Gordo or the fat one. And to tell us all about it, we can take you to Barcelona and speak to our reporter Yasmina Garcia Fernandez, who is with us. Yasmina, I talk about the many hundreds of people who are a little bit richer today, having won a slice of the lottery. I've just got a message. Now tell me, is this true? Have you been one of the lucky winners? I'm so pleased to hear that. That is actually, it would have been a little bit sad if AI had been right on this one. Yasmina, congratulations. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Live from London, this is BBC News. Czech police link a gunman who killed 14 people to two other attacks. They say he shot himself as they were closing in on him. I was immediately convinced that the fast arrival of police prevented more bloodshed. The UN Security Council is expected to vote on taking more aid into Gaza and creating conditions for a ceasefire. And do you have a lucky ticket? Spain grinds to a halt for its Christmas mega lottery, El Gordo, with almost 2.6 billion euros up for grabs. Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Welcome to BBC News Now. Police in Prague have revealed new details about Thursday's mass shooting at Charles University. 14 people were killed and the suspected gunman also died at the scene. Police have linked the massacre to a deadly attack in a Czech forest last week. They confirmed that Lenka Halkova, the head of the university's Institute of Musicology, was one of those shot dead yesterday. Outside the university, people have been leaving flowers, as you can see, in candles. And Saturday has been declared a national day of mourning across the Czech Republic. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. The United States has said it's ready to support the latest draft of a UN Security Council resolution on humanitarian aid for Gaza. The vote is expected on Friday after being delayed several times since Monday. The original draft called for a sustainable cessation of hostilities. This final version calls for creating the conditions for one. Let's hear from the US ambassador to the UN, Linda Thomas-Greenfield. Plenty more to come here on BBC News. I hope you can stay with us.
This is BBC News. The headlines. Police link the gunman responsible for a massacre in Prague to two other deadly attacks. The city is reeling from the deaths of 14 people. Sadly, this was a horrific situation, but the Czech Republic has shown that we are ready to react to the worst of situations. As a spacecraft prepares to dispose of waste from the International Space Station, we take a look at what happens to orbiting junk. And everyone's looking at their tickets in Spain, the country grinding to a halt for its Christmas mega lottery El Gordo, almost 2.6 billion euros is up for grabs. In the coming hours, the UN Security Council is expected to vote on a resolution to take more aid into Gaza and to create conditions for a ceasefire. The US says it's ready to support the watered-down draft. I've been speaking to Zina Aga. She's a policy analyst at al Shabaka, an independent transnational Palestinian think tank, and she gave me her reaction to this latest resolution. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. France is closing its embassy in Niger indefinitely. A letter to staff from the ambassador said the authorities had failed to respond favorably to repeated requests to allow the embassy to function normally following July's military coup in the West African country. Shortly after the coup, the embassy was attacked by thousands of pro-junta protesters. France and Niger have been allies in the fight against Islamist militants in the region, but relations soured after the coup, and the last French troops have now left Niger. Let's go live to Accra. We can speak to our correspondent who is covering the story for us, Thomas Nadi. Thomas, tell us why the French have decided at this moment to pull out of Niger. The Christmas drinks are on Yasmina. Good to have her join us from Barcelona. Now, five new species of soft-furred hedgehog have been discovered by scientists in the tropical forests of Southeast Asia. Hylames are members of the same family as the more familiar hedgehog, but they're covered in fur rather than spines. The discovery made after researchers found two previously unidentified specimens at the Smithsonian. Live from London, this is BBC News. Police link the gunman responsible for a massacre in Prague to two other deadly attacks. The city is reeling from the deaths of 14 people. Sadly, this was a horrific situation, but the Czech Republic has shown that we are ready to react to the worst of situations. The UN Security Council vote on a much delayed resolution for the Israel-Gaza war is expected in the coming hours. Police in the UK open an investigation into his disappearance. The British teenager Alex Batty talks about his life abroad and why he felt he had to return. They thought about the present. They didn't think about the future. Um, OK, yeah, I was safe and I was always healthy, but um, no social life, no meeting people my own age, kind of always being isolated. And the real deal or a plastic version? Questions are raised over the environmental effects of farming Christmas trees. Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Welcome to BBC News Now. Police in Prague have revealed new details about Thursday's mass shooting at Charles University. 14 people were killed and the suspected gunman also died at the scene. Police have linked the massacre to a deadly attack in a Czech forest last week. And they have also confirmed that Lenka Lavkova, the head of the University Institute of Musicology, was one of those shot dead yesterday. Outside the university, people have been leaving flowers and candles, and Saturday has been declared a national day of mourning across the Czech Republic. Sham Halil there in Bethlehem. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. 
You're live with BBC News. Here in the UK, Greater Manchester Police say they've launched a criminal investigation into the child abduction of Alex Batty from Oldham, who disappeared while on holiday in Spain when he was 11. The teenager is now 17 and was found in France 10 days ago. He's been speaking publicly for the first time since his return to the UK. In an interview with The Sun newspaper, he explained how he began to have doubts about his nomadic lifestyle a few years ago. Our correspondent Nick Johnson has the details for us. The views of some of the locals there in the Burgundy Mountains in France. Do stay with us here on BBC News. Now on BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. On the brink of recession, revised figures show the UK economy contracted between July and September. And a crackdown on gaming. Chinese regulators announced plans to stop online game enthusiasts from spending too much money sending shares in tech giants tumbling. Hello, I'm Vishala Sripathma. Welcome to World Business Report. We're going to start here in the UK, where we've had revised economic growth figures for between July and September. Now, it shows that the economy actually shrunk a bit by 0.1%, after previous estimates suggested growth had actually been flat. Meanwhile, there was zero growth between April and June after it was first calculated to have risen by 0.2%. Now, why is this important? Well, it could mean the UK is at risk of a recession. Well, earlier I spoke to Jane Smith. He's a developed market economist at ING. I began by asking him if the UK could be facing what some analysts are calling a mild recession. Well, let's look at some other news making stories today. China has signed off for the first direct delivery of a Boeing 787 Dreamliner in four years, in an indication that strained US-China trade relations may be easing. Junior Airlines is one of China's largest privately owned carriers, took delivery of its newest 787 Dreamliner on Thursday in a boost for the US plane manufacturer. Now, the delivery marks a breakthrough for Boeing, which has been largely shut out of China's aviation market for the last decade. And the White House says Nippon Steel's plans to buy U.S. steel should be investigated on national security grounds, even though Japan is a close ally. In a statement, it also expressed concern about the deal's potential impact on supply chain reliability. Now, the $15 billion takeover of the 122-year-old U.S. steel would create one of the world's biggest steel companies. But USW, the powerful United Steel Workers Union, has also criticised the deal as being short-sighted. Right, let's take a look at markets before we go. Now, European markets, the FTSE 100, it started off the morning in negative territory, slightly off the back of those economic figures, those revised economic figures. As you can see, it's back in the green territory now and is fairly flat, as is the DAX and CAC. In the US, something to watch out is Nike. Nike um, made an announcement yesterday saying that they had to cut lots of jobs and so therefore their share price tumbled in pre-trading. That's it for the business news. I'm Vishala Sripatha. Thanks for watching. In the world of business, everything is connected. From global hubs to places less traveled. The big stories to your bottom line. The path can be unpredictable.
With the right insights, you can see where the bend in the road will lead. Business on BBC News. Make the connection. Hello there, I'm Ollie Foster with the latest sports news. We're just a few hours away from the final of FIFA's Club World Cup. Uh, Pep Guardiola's really been building up the importance of this tournament. Uh, lots more on the BBC Sport website. I'll be back in the next hour with another update. Ollie, see you soon. Thank you. Some space news for you now. And a craft has left the International Space Station. Uh, this is the moment that we can see it slowly edging away. But instead of returning to Earth, it will begin a planned, destructive re-entry into Earth's atmosphere where it will disappear. The Cygnus spacecraft contains rubbish from on board the ISS. Dr. Neve Shaw tells us what to expect once the spacecraft re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. And it has won nothing. I was pleased to hear that, but I think Christmas drinks are on Yasmina with 120 euros. It might not go far, but congratulations to her. Good to have you with us on BBC News.